Well, good morning. Today we're starting a completely new book. It's the book of Daniel. And we'll start today with chapter 1, which is an introduction to the book. The book of Daniel begins in 604 BC, which is 18 years prior to the destruction of the first temple in 586 BC. Daniel and seven other young men, which is referred to in verse 1, chapter, verse 4, chapter 1, verse 4, were deported from Judah to Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar. The book ends two years after the 70 years of exile in 532 BC. The book is written in both Hebrew and Chaldean languages. The King James Bible, most of the modern Bibles, the book of Daniel, contains only 12 chapters. But in the Septuagint and the Jerusalem Bible, both translated from the most ancient texts, it contains 14 chapters. This means that at the time of Jesus in the synagogue, there were 14 chapters in the book of Daniel. The other important point to note is that the book of Daniel is not written as a historical book, even though some churches teach that it is. Refer to the appendix for more details, which we'll look at at the end. But I'll insert now a graphical representation of what we're going to be talking about for the rest of the book. As we look at this spreadsheet uh, bar chart, we'll see that capture of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar took place in 604 BC and it lasted for 70 years as was prophesied Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. Then the reign of Nebuchadnezzar actually started in 605 and ended in 538 when Belshazzar, who was, in the, who was under Nebanos, who was the king, Belshazzar is the regent, he was part of the team that actually broke into Beth, uh, to Babylon by marching through the, the canal of the Tigris River. There was only one year of his reign. It's recorded in Daniel chapter 5, verses 30, 31. After that, we had the reign of King Cyrus. Now, it says in the scriptures that after Belshazzar gets murdered, that Darius takes over as king. But it is not the, Dari the reign of King Darius that's referred to in several of the, of the scriptures because it's another one who is under the responsibility of King Cyrus who actually was the person who, who led the army to conquer Babylon because King Darius himself never ever captured Babylon. He was the Medes king, but of course in the scriptures referring to the capture of Babylon, it's the Medes and the Persians. Now let's continue. In the year of, third year of the reign of Joachim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Joachim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shonar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. In 605 BC, three years after King Joachim began to reign in Judah, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came and laid siege to Jerusalem, just as was prophesied by Jeremiah several years before. Came with his armies, and the Lord gave him victory over Joachim. This was a prophecy given by the Holy Spirit to Jeremiah, that the Jews would be held captives in Babylon for 70 years. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11. The duration of the Babylonian captivity was precisely 70 years. The reason for that was of the captivity is that the Israelites had failed to observe 70 Sabbath years. In other words, the Israelites were, were kept in Babylon for 70 years in order to atone for the 70 Sabbaths 
that they had failed to observe. When he returned to Babylon, we took along with him some of the sacred cups from the temple in, in Jerusalem and placed them in the treasury of his God in the land of Shinar. Verse 3, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the, his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes, children in whom was no blemish, but well favoured and skilful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge, and understanding science and such as had an ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them for three years, and at the end of thereof they might stand before the king to be examined. Now among these children was Judah, General, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name Belshazzar, and to Hananiah the name Shadrach, and to Mishael, Mashach, and to Azariah, Abednego. Unto whom the princes of the eunuchs gave to names, so I've just said that. Okay. Then he ordered Ashpenaz, who was in charge of his palace servants, literally his chief eunuch, referred to in 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 17 and 18, to select, to select some of the Jewish youths brought back as captives, young men of the royal family and of nobility of Judah, and to teach them Aramaic, the Chaldean language and literature, which would include mathematics, astronomy, history, plus a strong emphasis on alchemy and magic. Ashpenaz was instructed to pick strong and healthy, good-looking lads. Those who had read widely in many fields are well-informed, alert and sensible and have enough poise to look good around the palace. The king assigned them the best of the foods and the wine from his own to kitchen during their three-year training period, planning to make them his counsellors when they graduated. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were four of the young men chosen, all from the tribe of Judah. However, their superintendent gave them Babylonian names as follows. Daniel was called Belshazzar, Hananiah was called Shadrach, Mishael was called Meshach, and Azariah was called Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not devile himself with a portion of the king's meat. nor would he with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who has appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Az Azariah, Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat, which is chickpeas, and water to drink, or vegetables. Then let our countenance be looked upon before thee, and compared, compared to the children of, that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as seest, deal with thy servants. But Daniel made up his mind not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked permission of Melzar, the superintendent, to eat other things instead. Now as it happened, God had given the superintendent a special appreciation for Daniel and sympathy for his predicament, but he was alarmed by Daniel's suggestion. I'm afraid that you'll become pale and thin compared to the other youths of your age, he remarked. And then the king will have my head cut off for neglecting my duties and responsibilities. So Daniel talked it over with the steward who was appointed by Melzar to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle and Azariah and suggested that they try a 10-day diet of only vegetables and water 
then at the end of the 10 days to comport, compare them with the other youths that have been eating the food from the king's table and then decide whether they should continue on their diet or not. The steward finally agreed to this test and at the end of the 10 day period, Daniel and his three friends looked much healthier than the others that had been eating the rich food supplied by the king. As a result of this test, from that point onwards, the steward only fed them vegetables and water and not the rich food from the king's table. Verse 15, as these four children, God gave them knowledge and skills in all learning and wisdom and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he would bring them in, Melzar the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar the king. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them at least ten times better off than all of the other magicians and astrologers that were all in his realm. And Daniel continued even until the first year of King Cyrus. So what we see here is that because they were eating this non-doctored food or none of this rich food, they were eating just vegetables and water, God had given them favor and, and their advice and their wisdom and understanding was ten times better than all the other magicians and astrologers that were in the, the realm of Babylon. God gave these four years great giftings and abilities to learn, and they soon learned all of the liter literature and science of that time. And God gave Daniel special abilities to get the meaning and revelation of dreams and visions. When the three-year training period had ended, Melzar, the prince of the eunuchs, brought all of the young men to the king for an oral examination, as he had been ordered to do. King Nebuchadnezzar had a long talk with each of them, and none impressed him more than Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. As a result of this examination, they were put on the king's regular staff as advisors. So they were in the captivity, but they were now on permanent staff. In all matters requiring information and balanced judgment, the king found that the advice given by these four men was at least ten times better than all of his skilled magicians who worshipped other gods or wise astrologers who lived in his realm. Verse 